So, good morning. Good morning. I'd like to start by asking you to reflect. I'd ask you to call a time when your thinking was disrespected by someone else or a group of people. Now I'd like you to recall a time when your thinking really mattered to someone else or to a group of people. This has been my life's riddle and my quest. And I've been exploring this as an author, a consultant, but mostly as a thinking partner to others. And the quest is this. How can we create the conditions where our thinking differences are not disrespected, but dignified? And how can we grow our intelligence as individuals and be intelligent collaborators at the same time? These questions form the canvas of the art form I call collaborative intelligence. The most significant gift that our species brings to the world is our capacity to think. The most significant danger our species brings to the world is our inability to think with those who think differently. This is why uh, this question has been my internal compass since I was seven years old. Our, the consequences of not being able to think of those who think differently came to me as a shock at seven years old when I arrived in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia as an expat child. 1975, I arrived to this very different place, this vast desert landscape the spoken word, every smell, how people looked was different, was born. I just learned how to read, but I could not read here. I lived in a walled compound. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. I lived, oh. I lived in a walled compound. <laughs> Sorry. I lived in a walled compound of 300 other expats from 37 different countries. So there was no one way to be normal. To help me understand all that I was experiencing, I developed three friends, wonder, inquiry, and difference. The seven-year-old mind has a very unique way of navigating the world and making sense of all the strangeness that surrounds you. You see something unfamiliar, this sparks curiosity, you dive in with questions, and this leads to understanding. For example, I remember seeing an old man walking in the soups where there was lots of depredation going on. And he looked so scary. And I went up to him and I said, why do you have a long beard and carry a stick? And he laughed and he pointed to the truck over there full of camels. He was a herder. That stranger who was scary suddenly became some magical creature who got to ride camels, live in tents in the desert. What a shame we use the, lose this very authentic way of connecting one human to another, seven-year-old to an old man. I also had to learn the other side of that lesson. What is it like when people are afraid of your differences? At the age of 13, I took my very independent self off to Canadian boarding school. I left a land of foreigners where I felt completely at home and arrived at my home country and have never felt more like a foreigner. I dressed like them, but I could not begin to think like them. I grew up without mainstream TV, movie theaters, rock bands. I didn't know the movie stars. There was nothing about me that made me cool. My differences were very much misunderstood. The more I tried to connect, the more I was alienated, the more I was isolated. And I realized at this time that if I just use those old friends, wonder and inquiry, eventually I could maybe find a place I could connect. I also realized at this time that I was being a, given a gift. The gift that being awkward and confused by people was okay. You weren't going to die. More importantly, I didn't need to hate them. I took my confusion to my journal, and this was sort of the starting of my writing. Journals are a very safe place to work out confusion. You get it out of your head, and all of a sudden, it's not so evil. It was also at this time I learned I had another difference in the classroom. I desperately wanted to be that child that sat there and got good grades, got 
said magnificent answers when the teachers spoke your name. I wasn't that kid. I was the one in the back of the classroom staring out the window, lost in a world of wonder, story, imagination. I was the child who was doodling my next adventure on some random note paper. I was the child that shuddered with shyness every time the teacher spoke my name. I was the child who got in trouble for trying to do my homework hanging upside down on the monkey bars <laughs> with my notebook resting on the sand. My creative break got me through graduating at McGill, but it wasn't until I was 28 years old that I really dug deep into this work of understanding what beyond culture, gender, race makes our differences so hard to collaborate. And it's in the differences in how we think, learn, and communicate. And I learned at 28 that it's not if you are smart, it's how you are smart. And if you know how you are smart, at 28 I can finally say these three words. I am smart. And to me, those words collectively right here mean the world. They mean that all the differences that you were raised with, that made you who you are, actually belong, and that your thinking matters. So they are a declaration that you can run towards the future that you want to create. I started this talk with asking you to reflect. I now end with asking you to imagine. Imagine a world where every child recognizes their differences and that intelligence is measured by our ability to use those differences on behalf of what matters to us all. Thank you.